Hello! It is May 6th. It is Monday already. Can you believe that? Monday, and here we go, starting a brand new week. May 6th, 2K13. Thank you for being with us. This is WGTV Today. That's I'm Wayne right. Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Right. Good Monday morning. Hope your week is starting out beautiful. I am all fired up. Weather's Why? great. Springtime. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. It is. It's things been a nice up. weekend. All kinds of things happened. We've got lots to talk about. I am telling you. Uh, got to, I want to get to this right away. Okay. There's so many things going on at the, uh, at the Paramount. Uh, this, uh, this week, May 10th, the Dance Station Recital getting underway. Uh, and Piano Fiddle is on May 11th. Piano Fiddle. Piano Fiddle. Okay. I don't know. Go to goldsboroparamount.org to that, see details. That's exactly right. And then on the 19th, uh, Goldsboro Ballet will have a recital. That's right. And then May 23rd, 4th, and 5th, the Desiree Autry Dance Recital will be held. And then May 31st, the last day of the month through June 1st, Mrs. Ms. Robbins Academy of Dance and Gymnastics. That's right. And she's so from Mount Olive as well. I know. She's right there on Brazil Avenue. And That's it's, right. Yeah, and there's, it's, uh, there's so many things going on at the Paramount. So go to goldsboroparamount.com to get information about what's going on at the Paramount. That's exactly right. Yep. Well, let's talk about who's on today's show, oh, who's Wayne. Who's on today's show, Wayne? <laughs> we have a clip from the senior games. You know, that's an ongoing yeah. process right there. All kinds of things happening. We're going to show you a little video clip of that. We're also going to have a, Wayne had a chat with the chamber president of Mount Olive, a Miss Tyler Barwick Graham. Graham. Let's yeah. get that right. <laughs> and then we also, you had um, someone in, we talked about, you talked about animal adoption. Yes, Vicki Falconer is uh, going to be with us, and uh, we're going to find out about animal adoption. You know how, do you, can you, if you ever wanted to add to your family, Yes. you can do it so quickly. You can have a brand new member of your family so quickly. <laughs> just like that. Just like that, by, by adopting a pet from the Animal Adoption and Education Center. And you talk about easy to do, and there's some, there's some things, there's a few hoops you have to jump through, but it's so easy. And because uh, they want to make sure that the pet is going a, to a good home, going a to a safe good home, home, a nice, safe home, and it's it's the appropriate pet for your family. So uh, uh, we'll we'll talk to Vicky about that. Looking right. forward to it. I'm telling you, good stuff. Wanted to remind you tonight. There's a city council meeting. Of course, at five o'clock starts our work session. That's right, five o'clock. And then at seven o'clock p.m. in council chambers will be the formal meeting. It's open to the public. Love to have you there. That's right. And then tomorrow evening that's a first this is a first that's right wayne county commissioners will be meeting tomorrow evening the the briefing will get underway at 3 p.m the meeting itself will get underway at 4 p.m and then i believe public comments will begin at 6 p.m so this is a first as you say uh, we've well, had a some, while mm -hmm. had some people uh, who wanted to try this again it was tried some years ago but uh, want to try to have the commissioners want to try to have some meetings during the evening hours and try to make it accessible to everyone. Uh, the other meeting, the second meeting of the month, will be in the regular hours in the morning. But uh, this Tuesday, tomorrow's meeting will start at 3 with the briefing, 4 o'clock for the meeting itself. That's right. And that's in Commission Chambers, 4th floor, Wayne County Courthouse. Same place. 224 East Walnut Street, Goldsboro. MC, Ooh. USA, Earth. Did you get it all out? I think I did. <laughs> I think I did. 27530. Do you have a trivia question for us ah, today, or can you ah, can yeah. you locate us one while I talk to people about the Center Street Jam? I do, and you go right ahead. All right. I want to remind you, the very first Center Street Jam is coming up. It's Thursday, May the 16th. Oh boy. Put it on your calendars. It's going to start at 6 p.m., and it'll last until 9. The Band of Oz is the very first band of the season. But something special. Right. Anheuser-Busch is the sponsor for this particular oh, yeah. one, and the Clydesdales will be there live and Whoa. in person. The Clydesdales will be there for you to see, take pictures with, and learn all about them and their, where, they're, where they're kept, where they're housed, and how they spend their life. So that is at the Center Street Jam. They just horse around. May 16th. Come out and check it out on Center Street. You'll see. It's across the street from the Paramount Theater. Great big open parking lot. If you've never been to one, you need to come check it out because there's things for children, things for adults, and it's free to the public. Is this this is the Band of Oz? Play? Band of Oz, Band the very of Oz. first one. Wow, they are so great. Yes, they Love are. Love the Band of Oz. Bring your chair. 
Don't sure. cost you a thing. That's right. And I have a trivia question. All right, we're ready. If you know the answer to this trivia question, call 555 555 555 No, one. don't. No, don't. Okay. No, what's, what are we going to learn today? Today the is uh, world geography. World geography. World right. geography is a category. All right. In fact, it could be said to be U.S. geography. All right. In fact, that's what it is. We'll U.S. We'll geography. That. What is the southernmost state in the U.S. of A? The southernmost the state. The southernmost. The state closest to the equator. Hmm. 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 So one might would guess. One might. Go ahead. <laughs> I get them right a lot, but I get them wrong a lot. So he I'm, does get them right a lot. So I'm scared to guess. No, don't be scared. Mm. Don't ever be scared. Closest to, to the equator. Closest southernmost the, state. Southernmost. Well, I would think it's either Florida or Texas. And it's neither, right? <laughs> Come on. Get Come serious on, here. Come on, get serious. All right. Yeah. All right. Which one? Or is it one? Not going to tell you. Okay, I'm not either. Not I'm not going to tell, tell you. you. <laughs> She's guessing Florida or Texas. What would you say is the southernmost state in the U.S.? Closest to the equator. Closest state, closest U.S. state to the equator. Of course it's going to be. We can't tell you what it is right now. No. I'm not going to tell you what my third no, guess is. We'll my you. real guess is. It is continental U.S. right? I didn't say that. Uh-oh, he didn't say continental U.S. He's tricky that like is, that. that. That's okay. how he gets us every time. Okay, okay, ladies. You have to be complete with your questions. Ladies! <laughs> Don't be tricky. Don't be tricky. Okay, in that case, yes. we'll find another trivia question. Well, tell us the quick answer since we weren't quite open with the whole well you you know what it is it's hawaii of course it is hawaii is the closest u.s state to the equator all of right of course it is everybody knows that i guess they do <laughs> but if they didn't they do now how about that? that's right all right all right another question yep try it again another question mentonet Excuse me? Mentonet. M-I-N-T-O-N-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. Mentonet is a game. Yes, okay. Created by a fellow by the name of Morgan. William G. William, Will, Bill, B, Big B, Big W. G. Morgan created the game called Mentonet. I've never heard of it. In 1895, everyone knows this game. So it's obviously a different name these days. It is a different name now. How about Croquet? No. Nope. Mentonet, M-I-N-T-O-N-E-T-T-E. -E. The name of what we call it now doesn't sound anything like what it, w it okay. was called at that time in 1895 in Holyoke, Mass. So, in Holyoke, Mass, William Rover, G. Rover. Morgan. No, it was not Red Rover, Red Rover. <laughs> it's in Rover, Rover. That's not it. All right, we'll have to wait on that one, right? Mentonet. What, was the, what do we know this game as? And everybody knows this now. Okay. And it was, okay, it's a game. It's a act, very active game. It's, it's a team sport. A team That's sport, that helps. It. Team sport, okay. Sport? Figure it sport. out. It's All right. Sport? It's okay. a game. Sport, game, sport, okay, sport. It's a sport, sport. Come on, sport. All right, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's see. What else is happening today? Everything. Whee! Everything is happening today. That's right. Today is Monday, so don't forget this Wednesday to go by and visit the Farmer's Market. Yeah, oh, Herman boy. Park. Oh, yeah. On Herman Street side. Oh, yeah. Local fresh produce. Oh, yeah. Love the farmer's market. Yep. And roadside stands. Support our farmers here locally. If you had something to eat today, it means probably... Thank a, a farmer. Fa thank a farmer. Farmer helped you out there. Yes, they did. Yes. All right. All right. Today is indeed the 6th, and those having birthdays today... That's right. Or whom? George Gooney. Clooney. Clooney. Get that right. Clooney is Don't 50, need to mess that one up. 51 years today. You knew he was Rosemary Clooney's nephew. Yes. Okay. Knew and, that. And a lot of people may not know who that is, but she was one of my favorite singers. Rosemary Clooney. Come out of my house. My house. Anyway, uh, uh, Clooney uh, was 51 today. Uh, fellow is no longer with us. That would be Dr. Freud, Sigmund, mm -hmm. the big Sig, is, uh, <laughs> well, he's dead now, but I, he, he would have been celebrating a birthday had he lived, he'd be a very old man by now. Uh, Tom Bergeron. I also like Tom Bergeron quite a bit. He's oh, yeah. Hollywood Squares and uh, oh, he's done so much. America's Funniest Videos. And he's of course, Dancing with the Stars. Did he do that? He's doing it now. Oh, 
Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, he's 57 he today. He does that once a week. What are you talking about? Bob Seeger of the Silver Bullet no, no. Band. He's not awake yet. Huh? You haven't woken up yet? Huh? Well, it's still kind of, is it Monday yet? It's Monday and it's There you go. What do you want? I mean, <laughs> Bob Seeger of the Silver Bullet oh, Band. Yeah. Man, I love his music. I'm telling you, good old rock and roll. Uh, Bob Seeger, 67 today. The Say Hey Kid's having a birthday. That's Willie Mays. Woo! The Say Hey Kid is 81 today. 660 home runs for the Mets and the Giants in his career. Roma Downey, the lovely lady, is oh, 52 yes. today. What a pretty lady she is. She's an actress and singer known for her serious role in the TV drama Touched by an Angel. Do you know who she's married to? Some guy. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, they did. He is married. She's married to Mark Burnett. I knew that. Absolutely. They did the movies, he? the Bible. They did. They, they just produced the, the movie The Bible yeah. together. But yeah. He also does. Yeah, he does many, many Survivor. large shows. Survivor, he's the creator of the Survivor, and oh. he produces many very large, oh, high-quality yeah. oh. shows. Oh, does he really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. Orson Welles. Oh, yes, I remember Orson. Orson Welles, 1915 this day. Uh, Citizen Kane and a ton of other stuff. Talented. Love the man. Uh, you ever heard of Hurricane Carter? Reuben, Hurricane Carter, subject to the movie The Hurricane. Uh, Hurricane Carter is still with us. He's 75 years today, and I believe he was born in North Carolina. But yes, he was portrayed by Denzel Washington in the movie *The Hurricane*. He's 75. He was uh, wrong. He was a boxer, wrongly convicted of a murder, mm -hmm. and was sent to prison for years, and then finally was uh, vindicated. Uh, he was convicted twice, as a matter of fact, for the same murder there. Uh, birthday today for Vogue Beauty uh, Queen uh, Raquel Zimmerman. She is 29 today. You see her on the covers of Elle mm -hmm. and Marie Claire. Very good. Ever who that is? That is a magazine. Magazine Marie Claire. Yes. And Russell Stover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Chocolate Man, yeah, <laughs> uh, was born this day in 1888. Well, happy birthday to each and every one of you. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. you take the year 1888 in Roman numerals, there's more digits in that than any other year. How did you know that? I don't and know. And why did you know I that? I don't know. I don't know. He knows works. some very unusual trivia. Yeah. Um, we'll figure it out. Roman numerals, 1888. It goes for quite a ways. Go try to write that down. All right. There's a class that is taking place at the Arts Council of Wayne County. Hey, I got no class. And it's you called know what I mean. Silk Painting. I knew that. Silk Painting. The Arts Council will have a silk painting class, and the instructor is Martha Carnegie hey. on May the 8th from 5.30 until 6.30. And then again, she's going to offer the class on May 15th from 5.30 to 7.30. Adults only. The cost is $50. They are providing all the supplies. If you want to find out more about it or register yourself for a silk painting class, you can call 736-3300. That's the Arts Council of Wayne County right here downtown Goldsboro. Outstanding. Yes. That's good. All right. Do we want to do another one or do we want to I, go on? I think we want to move right on. Let's move right on here. That's right. Let's find out who's up next. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> do we have any idea? <laughs> it's mixed all in our papers. All three of them. All three of them we're okay. going to see right now. So we're going to head out and check it out and see what they've got to tell us. Watch this. I am telling you, man, what a, yeah, man, yes, ma'am, channel 10, yeah, that's right, last time you had one closest to the, closest to the stage, all right, Okay, so this is more than we had last time. So that's more than we had. Brian Keene meant to say, wait, wait. And he said, what, what? And as soon as he said that, I was going to say, what, 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 Oh, 
Keeping a total as I'm going. But if you don't want to do it that way, you do it whatever way you want to, but just make sure you let me know when I. All I'm doing is keeping a row. So this but if you want to do it another, I mean, you can do it however, do it however you want to do it. Just make sure I know when I'm looking at the scores. I really just need to do this. Okay? Okay, wait, wait. No score. Okay, thank you. I do now. I do. So there was no score in there. I know. Okay. That way, it's easier for me. That's fine. If you want to do it, if you want to do it that way, if you want to do it that way, you can do it that way. And we can just start right here or wherever you start. You know, that's fine. You don't have to add to those. Okay. How are you doing today, Honest? I am doing fine. How are you doing? It is a nice day, though. Yeah, it is.
are you doing about that? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. You know how that was a month ago?
turn the tide off. Barwick Graham is in the studio with us. Good morning. Good morning. Glad Thank you're you for, here. Thank you for having us. Always happy to have you in the studio with us. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow, you look rested. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> We're coming off the uh, the Pickle Festival here, and what a big success. It was a huge it success. It was gigantic. Can I just say how glad I am that it's over? <laughs> is that bad? Would you go, go ahead and say that? That's okay. I'm so glad it's over. She is so happy it's over. <laughs> What a big relief. What I'm a big relief. But it was a huge success. Do we I, have any numbers about how many people? Are I, I'm, you know, I'm horrible at that. And I haven't heard the official count. It seems to me like they tack on about 5,000 every year. But really, honestly, I, I would say if I had to guess that 45 to 50 was probably a, a good guess. I think that's probably a good guess. I think I was, it's safe to say. Yeah, I was there part of the time. And uh, gee whiz, people were, I mean, it was a mass of people. As far as getting around and everything, it was definitely the busiest time that I've ever seen. Yeah. And, and I know that we were steady in the information booth all day on just really like we've never been before. Yeah. So. Well, you know, the, the bands were great. The bands the were great. The food was amazing. Always. Oh! The one day a year, you know, next to the fair that you can get food like I that. Know. You can, you know, start out with a funnel cake for breakfast. Yes. And a corn a funnel cob, Wait a minute. Cotton candy. A funnel cake for breakfast? <laughs> Well, like not? a pancake or something. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Funnel cake. Right, okay. <laughs> For breakfast yet, okay. All right, now, food, entertainment, what was it for? Why did we, why did we have a pickles festival? Well, I mean, besides celebrating Mount Olive Pickles. Well, of course. I think it's really just a celebration of our community, a celebration of our neighbors, mm. and um, just... It's a great day to spend with your family and friends. You it know? is. Um, it is. We really, we really are blessed in Mount Olive with um, just a lot of groups that are doing good things, and I think it's the time to showcase that, yeah. to showcase what they're doing for the town mm -hmm. and how we're trying to grow and, and continue to grow. And, and we really just we enjoyed it, and I tell you what, the weather was perfect. Oh, it we was ideal. We could have for a better day. I so. was there taking video, and I even got a video of the of the the temperature gauge, yeah. you know, on the building there. Yeah. It, was, it was 72 degrees. It was degrees. so comfortable it, and just, it was. just nice. It was not humid. It was not hot. It was not cool. It was just right. Just right. right. That's right. what we needed. Kind, kind of a, a Goldilocks day. It was not to this, exactly. not to that. It was just right. Exactly. Now, how many people does it take to put something like this together? It really takes the community to put oh, it I'm together. Sure it does, I mean, yeah. besides, um, we do have a committee of individuals that you know, chair events and everything, but really, I mean, they can't do it alone because you have volunteers even beyond that. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, each civic group seems like they're all involved in some way, whether it's parking cars or, or having right. a booth out there or, or something. It seems like everybody in the community does their part yeah. to make the Pickle Festival happen. And so I think that's why it's a, a, a success. A, a success. A success. A success. <laughs> This Sorry, success. we're still tired. <laughs> I know you got to be, because you put in a lot of hours uh, we do. during this time. We uh, do. So when do you start? You have to start at least a couple of weeks before the event. A, a few weeks before. It's really on. I mean, really, we're always thinking pickle festival yeah. year round. We're thinking pickle festival, um, but I think it's steady on from January one up until April. It's it's that's all we're about. It's pickle festival. So. so Pretty much takes the first part of the year, yeah. Uh, yeah. four or five months to put all this together. It does. When it do does. you have to sign up and line up the entertainment? Um, that's early on, and Julie handles that. Mm -hmm. She's um, good with picking out the good bands and oh, everything. Yeah. But um, she does that, I would say, probably by January. Is that Julie Beck? Well. Mm -hmm. Julie it Beck. Yes, it is. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to Julie Beck. Shout out to Julie Beck there. <laughs> Yeah, well, your, your committee, your crew, and everybody involved, townspeople as well, the town leadership. Uh, of course, Mount Olive College is involved. Mount in Olive so Pickle Company ways. is so involved. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and we and really can't thank them enough. I know. And, There's so many people. And and beyond that, I mean, our volunteers, our sponsors. Mm -hmm. It's it's really and 
as far as you saying the college and the pickle company and the town of Mount Olive, really those three groups are pivotal in making yeah. the day happen, and we we can't thank them enough for all that they do. Now, so. the uh, there's people from far away. There are. Do you have any idea from where I people have come? No idea. I wish we did. We need to come up with something to to, to see yeah. who is the furthest. Yeah. You know who traveled the furthest. So. I, I, Maybe I next year we'll name it after you. No, don't name it after me. <laughs> no. No, it's, but that's a great. It is a good that's idea, a good idea for to, sure. To, to find a way to determine from from where people come, because I know they come from all around. Yeah. I mean, there were people from Raleigh there, and I know that. And oh, were, even I saw out-of-state tags, oh, even uh, Virginia beyond. and South Carolina, and even beyond. And do you know that on most of the folks that participate in the Tour de Pickle, the bike ride, yeah. are actually from out-of-state. Are they? It seems that those groups on that travel. Far and wide for mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I yeah. mean, if you're into riding 75 miles on a bike, whatever. No. <laughs> they, no. They, they really are mostly from out of state. And so that's a good thing. Is that a sanctioned um, uh, event, the, the bicycle? Yes, yes. That is sanctioned. So that's and, why people come from all around. Right. And as far as the cute patch, which is the 5K and mm -hmm. the tour de pickle, mm -hmm. we had our largest groups that we've ever had on, I would probably say around 200 folks in each group and we've never had that kind of wow. turnout. So oh, it's wonderful. It is it's really good. Well, so. I'm proud to live in the county that that hosts Mount Olive Mount Olive the North Thank Carolina you. Pickle Festival. Thank it's a hi. great <laughs> event, one of the 10 most popular and one of the 10 best in the state. That's right. Don't forget it. Or in the country. <laughs> Let's make it the country. One of the 10 Why best not? in the country. That sounds even Why better. Not? I love it. All right. <laughs> Great. That Tyler, thank better. you so much thank for being so with much, us. Thank you so much, Wayne. Tyler Barwick Graham, the president of the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Today we're talking with Vicki Falconer, the director of the Wayne County Animal Adoption and Education Center. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, Wayne. How are you? I am fantastic. We have some great pets that are available for adoption at the Animal Control and Adoption Center. And I'll tell you, if, 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 if there's anyone watching who has not been to your facility, it is an amazing place. Let me tell you, you have a great staff. Thank and you. And it's obvious to me, every time I go out there, and I go out there a lot, your staff really enjoys what they do. They love working with these animals. They love for these animals to get good homes. So if you're in the market for a new family member, hey, the Animal Adoption and Education Center is on Clingman Street. And we have a couple today we're going to talk about. One is a dog, a beagle. I love beagles. They are so smart. And a, and a cat. A cat. PB. Now, now, we'll start with the cat. Tell me about PB. Uh, or whatever PB you is. PB or peanut butter, they peanut have them butter, at the shelter. Okay. Uh, he is a Flame Point Siamese mix. Flame Point Siamese, mm -hmm. okay. He's white, he's got the orange Flame Point ears, oh, is where the name comes from. Okay. Um, he is eight months old. Mm -hmm. He is already neutered. Okay. And he is up to date on all of his vaccinations. Wow. And he also, this yeah. is good for PB, he has a sponsored adoption fee. So with an approved application, somebody has sponsored his adoption fee, so you could get him for nothing. With an approved application, mm -hmm. this is no money out of the pocket. Yep. You just take PB home and, and, and have yourself a nice cat. Yep. This is a nice cat, too. He's white with the pink uh, ears, orange. Or orange ears. Orange ears. Orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flame. Flame. Point. Oh, yeah. Flame point. Yeah. Orange fire. Oh, flame. Yeah. Orange yeah. ears. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is really, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, PB, peanut butter. Uh, eight months old and sponsored, which means you just take him home. Mm -hmm. With a, an approved application, we're going to tell you about that in just a moment. Now, the beagle. Beagle. Son, uh, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny is eight months old. Eight months old. He is $10 right Ten. now. Mm -hmm. $10. Now, what is normally the, app, the, uh, the fee? Now, I know the, the fee is normally higher than that because there's a, there's a lot of expense involved. Mm -hmm. With, uh, with caring for these animals while they're at the Animal Adoption Education Center. Now, the fee is much higher, but why only $10? Uh, a lot of times for the pets of the week, when we do the pets, because we spotlight two pets every mm -hmm. week, a lot of times we'll drop the fee down on some of ah, them right. just because they are the sponsored pet. There's either someone's taken a liking to them through the shelter and know they would make a great pet. Mm -hmm. Not saying that nothing else would, but we do have to spotlight. Um, there's sponsors that through the newspaper right. that wanted to sponsor the pet of the week. So my, the staff picks them every week and we just try to 
Being as we spotlighted them, give them another it's easier a, way out. Has Johnny had his shots? Johnny's had his distemper parvo and his kennel cough. He's already microchipped and he has had his rabies shot. He had. He's yes. had all that. Mm -hmm. So for only ten dollars, you get yourself a nice beagle, eight-month-old beagle, and and let let this let this eight-month-old beagle grow up with your family. Yes. Now a beagle is great with children. Yes. Fantastic with kids. Very protective. They love to play with children. A beagle is also very intelligent. Not to mention they're good hunters. Yes. Right. Yeah, they make a good pet. They do make a good pet. Mm -hmm. They don't get real big either. They get medium sized. Yeah, Most they're not. Do. I mean, there's different sizes for beagles. Yeah, different beagles. Um, this one is a. He's more of like a tan and white. He's not the tricolor beagle. Not the tricolor. Mm -hmm. He's tan and white. Um, and he was another reason his fee was dropped. He's actually a return. Oh. Somebody had adopted him, mm -hmm. and when we contacted the landlord, the landlord said it was fine. They got the beagle home. The landlord decided he didn't want the dog in the house, so they oh had my. to return him. Oh, no. So, oh, that's a shame. Um, that's how his microchip and everything is, yeah. and I dropped his price because he has a return. That means he's a very good, the, the, uh, the new owners, they were upset when they brought him back. He I'm had been sure. a good dog. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you can't fight the landlord if no, you want to keep your house. that's too bad. And that's one reason right there that uh, uh, it's, it's specified these uh, animals are available for adoption with approved application. That's yes, one of the things you That's check into. That's one of the main it. reasons, yeah. yes. You check with the landlords to make sure everything is okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's up to the landlords whether you can have pets in, in the house or not, if it's a rental property. It is, and it's also up to the landlord or the rental owners. Right. Because um, some of them, you know, they do go through businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, there are breed specific also. They don't allow some of the what they consider the dangerous animals. They don't allow those, right. so we're not going to adopt one out knowing it's hard on the animal. It's hard yeah. to send them home and then bring, have and to bring, them, bring back. them back. And it's not easy on the family either. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. You know, if you have children, that's tough. What are some of the other things that uh, enter into uh, an application approval? Um, we check the vet history. Um, if they write down that they have pets, we do call the vet to make sure that everything is right as it should be yes yeah you know. so if someone who's adopting who wants to come and adopt a, a, a pet you check and see if they have other pets and if they if they do you check the their, we make sure that they're taking care of the shots and their responsible. responsibility of owning a pet right and if they don't then if they don't do it with one mm -hmm. the likelihood that they would do it with another one is kind of low some uh, animals are, are large and need wide open spaces. Mm -hmm. Do you do you specify do, or do you do you uh, qualify someone to uh, 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 if you're going to if you're going to take this dog home with you, he needs a, 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 a half acre or a quarter acre space to Not run. Not really. Does it have to have a fenced yard? Does it? Um, I really would prefer a fenced yard, but I can't really deny for because of a fenced in yard. Mm -hmm. Um, the only other thing that would be a denial is spay and neuter. Yeah. If your other pets are not spayed and neutered, I wouldn't come and look at anything because you're not getting one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So anyway, to adopt a pet, it's easy. All you have to do is fill out an application, get that application approved. They're going to call the landlord. And call the vet. Of course, if you're a homeowner, they're not going to call right. you. But they're going to call and they're going to call the vet. Mm -hmm. And after that, if everything is in Every, place, everything's in place. They can you can take the pet home with you that day. Oh boy! Now, do you handle ever handle anything other than dogs and cats? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have anything other than dogs and cats right now. Right. What have you handled in the past? Ah, uh, we've had chinchillas. Chinchillas. We've had hamsters. Somebody trying to grow a coat. Yes. Really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've had hamsters. We've really? had rabbits. Rabbits. We get ferrets fairly often. Do you? Um, we, I've walked in and there's been owls and ducks and goats in my kennels. Wow. Yeah. We do so a what lot. do you do with them? The, what? The, the ducks and the goats and the chinchillas and all that. Um, the ducks and the goats, we normally will get them into a, you know, someplace with the livestock. Mm -hmm. We don't hold them in the shelter very long because goats can make tear up a kennel real fast. Yeah. Um, the duck, if a lot of people, they can come in, they can adopt them if they know it's there. Um, the owl, we just kept it because it was injured and then we set, took it back to where hmm. it went to a wildlife rehabilitator, mm -hmm. yeah. got its wings fixed, and then we have to take the owl back to where we picked it up at. Ah. 
did this owl fly away? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay, so he's okay then, as far as we know. As he's far out, as I know. He's out doing his owl thing. Mm -hmm. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Um, the ferrets, we've put those online, or, you know, we take a picture and send out. We mm -hmm. put them online, and then we may send out an email. Um, one, of the, one of the first ferrets we ever had went to a gentleman that worked for the county. Mm. And a little thing was written up that Freddie the ferret needs a new home. Freddie the ferret. How about that? And within the first five minutes of Freddie being sent out on email, the guy was at the shelter. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. I get a lot of a lot of people want a ferret, so. Yeah. Um, well, they're fun. Yeah. They're uh, an otter-like, yeah. mischievous, curious kind of an animal. Yes. They're musky smelling, though. Musky smelling. But they're not necessarily an animal that you'd want to have around children, necessarily. Um, no, I think if you got it young and knew, ex you know, where yeah, it would grow, yeah. that would be okay. If you're getting one from there, it's a little, you know, maybe you mm -hmm. would be able to tell once you got it home to yeah. see. But, I mean, people walk them on leashes and yeah. take them for, they're just normal pet. There you go. Okay. Well, if you, when, you, when you get something out of the ordinary like that, let us know about it. Oh, I will. Okay. All right. And if you're interested in adopting a dog or a cat, perhaps uh, peanut butter or perhaps Johnny, uh, call the uh, Animal Adoption and Education Center on Clingman Street in Goldsboro. What are the hours? We are open Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 530 mm -hmm. and the first and third Saturday from 10 to noon. 12 until 5. 30. 30. Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. First and third Saturday from 10 till noon. Yes. All right. I got it. All right. 731-1439. Yes. 919-731-1439. Vicki Falconer says, come see us. Please do. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, I've got an answer to today's trivia question. If well, you remind us what the question is. The question, again, is a fellow by the name of Big Bill Morgan, William G. Morgan, created a game called Mentonet. And the year was 1895. Okay. It was in Holyoke, Massachusetts. He, he uh, the, the game was later changed to be called something else, but he called it Mentonet. It's a team sport. A team sport, all right. And we all are very aware of this sport. Everybody knows this game. Okay. A game, sport, or whatever you want to call it. It's a game that uses a ball. Okay. It uses a net okay. strung across a court. Badminton, volleyball. 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 Ta-da! Very good. It was called Mentonet. When it first, I don't know why. Our producer said, why? Because I didn't ask why. Well, uh, no, she did, though. Uh -huh. yeah. but, but you guys don't know that. Mentonet. <laughs> why? Was changed to volleyball. My only guess, if I had to guess. And please share. I'm going to figure this out, is that you volley the ball across the net. Well, that, that, I, I can figure out why it's called volleyball. Okay, why okay. I don't know. He <laughs> named it after his dog, Minton. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. It matters not. <laughs> it matters not. It was volleyball, and that's the answer to the trivia question. Matter, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's see. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, the week of May 20th through 24th. We've talked about this several times. It matters not. I mean, this matters. It is called Small Business Week. Small Business Week. An exciting week of events in honor of our small business right here in Wayne County. Yeah. Let's see, there's going to be many things offered. Oh my goodness, and this is all through the uh, cha Chamber of Commerce. There's going to be classes that are going to be, oh, what is that called? Leveraging, you might better read this because you can well, see it better than I Well, it is kind of fuzzy there, isn't it? It is, it's leveraging modern, something. Leveraging the Internet for Business Success. Leveraging the internet for business success. Yes. And, and that is very, very important because internet is such a part of all our lives now, particularly in the business world. At, uh, and that's Monday. Jeremy Caton, our very own Jeremy, is going to be uh, producing or presenting that part of the program. And from 6 till 9, Pat Collette will present how to start a small business. So every day that week, there will be different topics at the Chamber of Commerce. Ed Spence will have something for you on Tuesday evening. The Schmooza Palooza, uh, also on Tuesday evening, Business Expo, to be a vendor, visit WayneCountyChamber.com. Uh, also, that same evening, Tuesday evening, uh, Tom Zaleski will present Shoestring Marketing. Wow. You know, it, these are great topics these if are you're great a small topics. business and 
and, and you need uh, some help gathering this information, this is the perfect place to go. Many different topics. And then on Wednesday, the Small Business of the Year Award Luncheon takes place at Lane Tree That's Country right. Club. On Thursday, Kathy Graham will present employment law updates. You That's ever-changing. That is ever-changing. Um, Wayne Community College uh, that same evening will have a, a small business roundtable. Attendees should RSVP by the 20th, by the way. And then on Friday, they'll round out the week with Catherine Lachaud of the Chamber of Commerce. Catherine, of course, with United Way, She's but with, with the Chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at is be taking place at the chamber. She'll be talking about story, uh, savvy storytelling through media. And she's very good at that. Yes, she is. Will you tell them a number they can call if they want to learn all about Small Business Week, which once again, May 20th through 24th. If you want to find out more details, where do they call? Okay, there's a couple of numbers to call. Uh, you can call the Wayne County Chamber at 734-2241-919-734-2241. Or you can call uh, to pre-register for the events at Wayne Community College. Visit... Uh, ncsbc.net, uh, click contact your local SBC, select Wayne Community College, choose event, and then click register or call 919. Might be simpler to call. It will be simpler, <laughs> simpler to call because I lost my place, 739-6940. So we have the chamber, 734-2241 or 739-6940. That's right. Don't forget, the city of Goldsboro has the big contest going on. Oh, yeah. What's in a name? What's in a name? Yes, we are sponsoring a contest to come up with a slogan or motto to promote the many qualities, wonderful qualities of our yeah. city. What's in a name and why is it important? A name tells a story, our story. It should be positive, original, and memorable. It should be believable, this is who we are. But it can also be aspirational, this is where we are evolving. Everybody's eligible to submit. We welcome individuals and groups. You go to goldsboronc.gov, which is the city's website. That's right. You'll see what's in a name all over our homepage. What's in a name. What's in a name. You click on it and you can submit. We want you, the citizens of Goldsboro and Wayne County, to submit different mottos and slogans that you come up with. They must be original to represent our city. Yeah, somebody's already using Nobody Doesn't Like Sarah Lee. You can't use that. No, you can't. Just can't use that one. <laughs> we, we do want you to be original, though. There's going to be a top 20 group of winners that will be selected. They will get great prizes. There's going to be a group of five that will be selected. And five. Then five. Then five. it gets down to the big winner. The big winner. And all these prizes you can see listed on goldsboronc.gov. Click on what's in a name. All the prize packages are there. What's in a name? What's in a name? This contest goes between May 1st and June 30th. You mm -hmm. have to submit. Submit as many times as you would like. But we want you to be original and participate. All right. So now between, between now and the end of June. That's exactly so you, right. You've got some time here. So think. And can you enter more than once? As many times as you would like. As many times as you would like. That's exactly right. And oh you can boy. do it one of two ways. You can go to the city's website or... You can walk into City Hall, and there will be forms right there as soon as you walk in and in the water department where you can pick up and you can actually handwrite it and deliver it right back to anyone in the city of Goldsboro, and they'll get it to us. But don't write it in water. No, just you can write it in the water department. Is that where you're going with that yeah. one? I thought it might be. <laughs> but we do want to hear from you. Wouldn't that be fantastic that to be would. able to have the title of, I came up with the slogan, that the city of Goldsboro uses for years to come. Yeah, and then win a prize for it. A big prize yeah, package. Yeah, that is really nice. It sure is, so we want to hear from you. Okay. All right. I so believe... Who, do we... What's on tomorrow's program? Do yes, we have that? I believe we might. We have that. On tomorrow's show, we have Meg Grenade in, and she's oh. here to talk about downtown development, downtown Goldsboro development, and mm -hmm. Center Street Jams. She's oh. going to talk details about that. Oh, man. We've got another senior games update, you know, because that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. We want to see how these uh, seniors here in our community are representing us and playing all these different games. Yeah. And Disco Discover Tech, that was the final coverage you have mm -hmm. of that extraordinary exhibit went out on the last day and it's it's still fun to go out there that's anyway, right that's be... all on tomorrow's show so join us tomorrow morning at seven o'clock as we begin a brand new day tomorrow morning tuesday morning right here on wgtv today start at seven and we also repeat the program at noon repeat the program at 5 30 and again later in the evening so join us then or go to youtube 
Go to WayneGov.com, click on the YouTube link on the right-hand side. It'll take you to our channel. All our shows are archived for some reason. And Wayne, if they have an event coming up, we want you to just email it to us. We would we need it two weeks in advance two to weeks. get it on the show. Two and where weeks. can they email it? You can ma email it to WGTV at WayneGov.com. That's exactly right. <laughs> WGTV at WayneGov.com. That's right. Just email it to us and we will get it on the show. Thanks so much for being with us today. We hope you have a beautiful Monday. And until tomorrow morning, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.